This video is designed to walk you through all of the different ways you can bring your Toast website live. It also covers some common issues that you might run into while trying to complete this task. It is split into multiple sections and you can navigate to your area of interest using the information in the description below. At a high level, there are two ways to bring your Toast website live. You can go live on a generic URL that Toast provides you, or you can connect a custom URL that you own. If you go live on a custom URL, that will help your SEO and make it easier for customers to discover you by searching your brand. However, if your priority is to go live quickly, the generic URL is a great option for you. The two are not mutually exclusive either, and you can have both operating at the same time to maximize the number of paths that a customer can take to get to your web. We're going to start by talking about the generic URL path. The generic URL that Toast provides you is represented as your preview URL, which is shown here. You see that it is not live and has been generated according to the URL scheme restaurant.toast.site with your restaurant's name substituting at the front of that URL. If I visit this URL before going live, I'll see my website, but at the top of the site, there will be a blue banner saying that the site is in preview mode. As long as the site is in preview mode, this banner will persist. To go live on a generic URL, scroll to the top of your settings page and click go live. You'll be shown this pop-up asking if you want to go live on a custom domain or a generic URL. Click go live with a generic URL. You'll be asked to confirm that you're ready to go live and shown your URL once again here. Click yes, take my site live and your site will be live. Now when I go back to that preview URL and refresh, that blue banner is gone and my site is now live on the internet. Now I'm going to walk you through how to bring your site live on a custom domain. We're going to work on the same site here, which is already live on the generic domain, but the process would be the same if you were working on a new site that hadn't been taken live yet. To bring your site live on a custom domain, you're first going to need a custom domain. Now you can purchase this through any domain registrar. You can even purchase it through Ionos, a partner that we use, by clicking Purchase a Domain here. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you already have a custom domain that you want to use. In this case, I'm going to use the custom domain demo-restaurant.site. To connect your custom domain, click Connect a Domain. You'll be shown this prompt informing you that we use Entry as a partner to automatically configure your domain. Click Continue. You're going to be asked here to enter the domain you want to connect. I'm going to enter demo restaurant.site. Now please bear in mind, this is a root domain. If you want to connect a subdomain, like order.restaurant.site to your online ordering page, check the box that says I want to use a subdomain. But we're not doing that right now. We're connecting a root domain to our website. Hit continue. Entry will scan this domain, identify the provider, and then show you how to uh, a page asking you to log in to that domain provider with your domain provider's account. 
I'm going to log into this page now. You will see a skip as I jump past this screen so that you don't see my login details. I have now logged into my account. An entry is now automatically updating the DNS configuration on my domain. It tells me now that demo restaurant.site is now configured and I'm going to click done. I now see that demo restaurant.site is verifying. Verification usually happens quickly within an hour or so, but can take up to 48 hours in some instances. If we're unable to verify this domain, this will change to a red box saying error. Let's see how we're doing. I'm now logged into my domain provider and I can see that my DNS records have been updated in response to what we just did through entry. I have my A record and my three relevant C name records. These are all updated. Now, when I go to demo restaurant.site, I am redirected to the website that I just set up and my custom domain is connected. Now there is another way to connect your custom domain to your Toast website. And I'm gonna walk you through that now. This is our manual connection flow and it's gonna end in the same result but we're going to take a different path to get there. So let me go back into my website settings. You can see that I still have the same domain that I connected before active there. Now we're going to connect a second domain. And this domain is going to be another dash demo dash restaurant dot site. Why would you connect a domain manually? instead of through this automatic flow. Well, if you try to go through the automatic flow and do not see your domain registrar, you will have to connect manually to get your domain to work with your website. In addition, the manual process that we're going to walk through here is important if you're troubleshooting issues that are related to your domain's DNS settings. To connect a domain manually, we again come to our settings and click connect a domain. We see the same prompt. And then we are asked to input the domain we are connecting. In this case, another demo restaurant.site. Click continue. Entry will analyze the domain and come back with the DNS provider as before, if it can detect it. From here, one of two things will happen. If Entry is unable to detect your domain provider, it will take you into the manual flow. If Entry is able to detect a provider, but it's the wrong one, or you want to check your records manually, yourself, you can also force your way into the manual flow. This is valuable when troubleshooting. To enter the manual flow, click the gear in the lower left corner of this window. You'll be asked to select your provider. To get into the manual flow, scroll to the bottom and click can't find your provider set up manually. When you do this, you will be shown four different records. These are the records that you need to add to your domain provider to connect your domain to your Toast website. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. There are four records here, one A record and three C name records. We're going to start by connecting the A record. So when I go into my domain's DNS settings, I see two A records and one C name record already present. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete both of these A records. 
Now, I've deleted these records because these specific records would create a conflict with the records that we are about to update. So if you have any A records or C name records that specifically have the host values of at or www in them, you should delete those to avoid a conflict. I click add record. This is an A record. I now need to add the host name and IP address to this record. I'll go back over here. I'll copy the host name. And I'll copy the IP address. Now you see it here. I now need to add three CNAME records going through the same process. So copy, copy. As you can see, I've now updated these four DNS records with the correct values that they need to recognize the Toast website. But there's one more thing I have to do. I need to go back into Toast, and I need to click this button. This is the step that will tell Toast to check this domain's DNS records and actually make the connection. If you click this X here or close out of this window before you have completed these final steps, your domain will not connect. I will click this. Everything is done. I click done. And now we're listening. After about a minute, I go here to another demo restaurant.site. I click it, and you can see it also is working. So both demo restaurant.site and another demo restaurant.site are taking me to my restaurant's website. Now, there may be scenarios where you run into issues connecting your domain to your Toast website. In some cases, I want to talk about two of those scenarios now and tell you how to resolve them. We just went through the process of updating DNS records to make sure that your domain and your website were properly connected to one another. But if any of these records values or host names are inaccurate, a typo here, an extra space there, this connection will fail. So the first thing you should do whenever you are trying to troubleshoot a domain connection is look at the DNS records and make sure they match exactly. An additional problem happens when you have conflicting or duplicative DNS records associated with your domain. For instance, you may have multiple A records that resolve to the same host either an at symbol or a www, but which point to different values. You'll want to make sure that you only have one A record pointing to that host of at or www, then resolving to the correct value. The same thing applies for CNAME records. You'll want to make sure that you only have one CNAME record pointing to a www or an at as your host that is then pointing to the correct value. If you have multiple CNAME records resolving to the same host, www or at, then resolving to different values, you'll create a conflict. These things can confuse your domain about where it should actually be pointing. And so, in addition to making sure that the records you have here reflect the correct values, make sure that you don't have any conflicting records. If you do, delete the conflicting records. 
The last thing that I want to talk about is name servers. Now, most domain providers have a default set of name servers that they use when making a connection between your domain and your website. In this particular instance, I'm using Hover as my domain registrar. And the name servers for Hover, by default, are set to ns1.hover.com and ns2.hover.com. Most of the time, you're not going to have to touch your name server. However, if you have previously used your domain with another website, that website may have, in the process of getting your domain set up, used custom name servers that have overwritten the domain provider's defaults. This can cause issues when trying to connect your domain to a Toast website. To address that, make sure that you are using the domain provider's default name servers. If you have the opportunity to edit or revert the name servers here, make sure they reflect the default values that your domain provider specifies. Finally, if you've been making updates or changes inside of your domain provider and you're still not seeing your website go live or you're still seeing errors when trying to visit your domain, there is one last step you should take. That last step is to delete and manually re-add your domain from your website. Now, I will demonstrate. We have already manually configured the DNS for another demo restaurant.site. Let's assume, though, that it's not working after a period of roughly 24 hours. You may see this verifying badge turn into an error badge. Even after you've confirmed that your website's DNS settings are properly configured, if you're seeing that error state here, you may want to come back in and give the system a little kick to make sure that it goes and checks those DNS settings. To do that, simply delete that domain. Go to add it back. and push yourself through the manual connection process. Now again, if you've already confirmed that your DNS is properly configured, we're not updating those records. All we're doing is telling Toast to listen for them one more time. So go back to the manual domain connection flow, click copy on each of these values, and confirm that you're done. Now Toast is going to start listening again, and if you've updated your record, connect your domain. I hope that this guide has been helpful in instructing you how to take your Toast website live.